by the way, so there are, however, moments where, where Heidegger, obviously, it's Heidegger, um, the, where he absolutely sees how certain aspects of metaphysics uh, come to play in what we would now call transhumanism and a technical understanding of. So, for example, but the, I wouldn't blame metaphysics itself. I would say that this is a, a corruption of it or a stifling or an evoicelichung, so an externalization, a superficialization of what is at stake in metaphysics. I'll give you one example. What I mean, for example, the notion of so on log on the horn, which Aristotle never said, but gets attributed to him. So the, the living being that holds itself in logos which comes to be translated by the scholastics into Latin as animal rationale, which becomes an English rational animal. And now we're no longer rational animals. We are now supposedly hackable animals. I'm not going uh, to mention uh, the serpent's name, but uh, you know, I don't want to poison my tongue, so I won't mention it. But uh, this person, whoever it is, this person, uh, maybe... It, 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 this person is maybe a hackable animal, um, but not human, not the human being is not a hackable animal, but this is, but this, so this is a corruption of the deep insight into logos. And I don't think that with AI that we are confronted with, with logos, we're confronted with a, with a mirror of it, um, perhaps with, with, with something that is functionally similar, but doesn't ever get to the full scope and breadth and depth of it but the resignation of philosophy i think is it, this resignation itself begin i mean if you want to put a, a, a timeline on it occurs at some point perhaps after hegel uh, <clears throat> as you know nietzsche is the first philosopher of, of nihilism he calls himself the first complete nihilist of europe the mood that is around in Europe or the, the, the genuine, the general, sorry, mood of, of crisis begins sometime in the mid 19th century and hasn't left us since. Um, but it hasn't, <clears throat> it hasn't, as it were, led to a profound uh, decision, which is what a, a crisis should be or should lead to. Or, a deciding moment. I don't think so. To come back to Heidegger, I don't think there's a full resignation there, but this giving up on philosophy, which may also be a provocation, um, is is dangerous in the sense that philosophy is the knowledge of not the knowledge, but the the insight into, say, principles, for example, by which at all um, we can make sense of the world, and the. Deleuze and, and others. I, I don't. I haven't uh, read all too much. I wasn't very impressed with what I saw. Uh, I think it's unreadable to me. Is Deleuze is unreadable? Um, it's it, it. He purely talks of the, you know, this talk of the what is it? The machine. Every, everything's a machine. I don't know. I can't really. Um, make much sense of it to me what this indicates is a bit of a a problem of the language itself in which this is written which is that it's written in french it's uh it, it's not that there's a problem with the french language but the, the french has um at this point was already very not ossified but in some sense too too rigid it had become nationalized and it was, you know as you know there's the, there's the the national committee which decides what what language is what word is allowed to enter the language how the language is supposed to change and not change so it's it's, it's almost like it's no it's a bureaucratic language ultimately and which is why they read heidegger so much because in right. heidegger all of a sudden you have someone who writes like Hölderlin. Uh, who, who writes like a, a poet in philosophy, uh, extremely free in language, in, inventing words or coming back to the to the to the to the ramifications of of words and their the spinal unfoldings, etc. 
So, but I think ultimately the, the 20th century was a big question mark uh, philosophically, um, very rarely capable or willing to take a stand like Nietzsche still was, for example. Uh, you know, as you can see this on the book titles, you know, on the way to, or towards, or between. I mean, there's still, still today, if you look at continental books that are popular, I mean, books by continental philosophers, it's always, you know, it's between metaphysics and science. It's between ethics and, you know, no, no, it's just, I think uh, if, if we're not going, if we're, you know, this, is, this is a very young century, um, and we're young enough, then we have to overcome this uh, ultimate resignation and take a, take a stand and a, st and a stance uh, and move out of this either you know, complete resignation of someone like Schiller, which just leads into the machinic, or also that of someone like Heidegger, who begins to see all of thinking purely according to, oh, it's all just metaphysics. And all that metaphysics tries to do is to secure the beingness of beings, which she then sees replicated or repeating itself in technology. And I don't think that that's even what technology is trying to do, but that's a different story, perhaps.